Hi. 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 This is the new pre-roll section. If you like this podcast, don't forget to subscribe. Do it in the app you're using or go to our website, grandpodcast.com. If you go to our website, you can find a link to our Patreon. Or you can perhaps buy us a coffee a month or a week or a or, or a couple of year, whatever. Yeah. Any small contributions are welcome. Whatever you like. Um, there's also a mug for sale. <laughs> I like our mug. It's my favourite mug. It's a nice mug. You can support our enterprises too. If you go to goodtohear.co.uk slash free, imagine that, you can get my, audio, my e-book thing that I wrote that is all about tracking happiness and, you know, ways to kind of understand your brain a bit better through... Data science. Do you want to plug anything before we continue? Yes, you can go to restaurantsbrighton.co.uk <laughs> and you know, write order reviews, takeout. like things, follow <laughs> things, order takeout, <laughs> buy, buy people vouchers. Just be nice and support Brighton hospitality industry. <laughs> there you go. Sounds good. Welcome to Michael and Ivanka's Grand Podcast, a weekly remote teleconference on subjects. My name's Michael Forrest. And I'm Ivanka Magic. And this week's grand subject that occurred to me um, as something that we, like science, have not covered is the subject of control. Control. It's a good one, isn't it? It's like, um, I was thinking about it in terms of my sort of my existence and my my livelihood at the moment where I sort of feel like I'm weirdly out of control of it in a sort of fun way uh, but then there's you know there's all the take back control stuff there's the the Las Vegas woman talking about control groups and science and all that what else well there's there's like personal stress levels affected by a utter lack of control mm. over a virus mm -hmm. <laughs> and the effect it's having on all our lives yeah. everywhere um the lack of ability to plan mm. you know a, a feeling or an absence of control makes people do lots of weird things to each other to themselves mm. you know, and it's that disorders addictions yeah. all sorts of crazy it's stuff it's that thing like coffee for the things that you can control and wine for the things that you can't um, or just, you know, like, uh, you know, can do what you can control and just stop worrying about stuff that you can't. Um, it's some very good advice just for psychological well-being reasons. But yeah, so control, get ready. All right, Ivanka, how's it going? Oh. How's life? All right, Michael. I can see the sun shine. It's, it's going very well, very busy. I am delighted with the progress of the plants growing in my garden. Mm. I've got a very strong concept of weeds that are allowed to stay because mm. they look pretty like poppies and weeds that I eat. Our, gar our plant garden <laughs> I just came out this morning, I think because it rained yesterday, it's a, it looks, it's a disgrace. It's just that everything's just come up, and it's just we put we bought we put so many plants down and planted things and thrown things down, and it's just a mess. It just doesn't look like anything good has come up at all. Oh, you're frozen. Um, no, I'm not. Oh, I am. From, may, well, I don't know what the problem is. At least it's maybe on, it's this computer. At least it's on a smile. <laughs> well, you, we can leave it on this because I'll feel like you're enjoying everything I'm saying. Uh. <laughs> the, uh, maybe it'll recover uh, yes so I'm enjoying that work is very interesting I can't remember if I told you last week if, it had, if I'd had this chat but I did some really interesting research about a year ago I didn't really hear anything afterwards but apparently they're, they're so they, it's the only user research they've had that sort of lived right. <laughs> and been used mm -hmm. so I'm going to go back and do a bit more so that's very interesting and I'm happy about that lovely and that's and it's all sort of working out quite well I think okay, at cool. the moment remote yeah. work in remote work getting in. the big bucks from abroad <laughs> uh, how are you Michael how is your week <laughs> My week is, do you know what happened today, this morning, for the very first time since I quit contracting, 
I paid my salary using app sales money. <gasps> I have, and it was an exciting, but the problem is, I did have, I did uh, have this episode this morning. I've been, I've been waking up so early recently, and then there's this thing of, I think it's, I wake up at five, and I'm just like, I, I can't get back to sleep, so I just get up because I can always work on something. So I just go and spend like an hour, of, like trying to fix a bug I was fixing yesterday, or like figuring out an email or doing some research. Um, and I can just use all of that time in the early hours in a way that I guess I couldn't used to and it's sort of encouraging me to develop these slightly janky sleeping habits but this morning like it was it's the first of the month as we're recording and it was like I've been waiting ever since these app sales started really picking up this is like the first payday following that and I looked at the number I looked at my bank account at like four o'clock and I saw the payment gone in but it was like it seemed like it was like 40 percent less than it should be and so then obviously I was not going to get that to sleep um, but then I sort of tried to go back to bed, but it was just like, and then I just had to get up at like 4.30 and go on the laptop and like log into App Store Connect and be like, what's happening here? Like I'm looking at the, the sales on one thing and they just don't, there's like a missing, like hundreds of sales missing. I'm like, what the hell is going on? Like that feeling of being soured against the whole thing of Apple and like, what would I do if they just wanted to screw me over? Like, what could I do? They're in the US. They're too powerful. You know, I, I, what am I going to do instead of making apps? So I had that whole experience. But I got up again at six at thinking, right, I just need to Google the thing and see if it's... And then I eventually figured out, basically, it's just the way that the um, fiscal calendar that Apple pays you against lines up differently to the dates on the thing. And actually, because so, so a lot of the end of the month sales hadn't gone into this month sales. So I think I am getting my money. It's just like it's going to be... June is going to be when we... Uh, you know, June is celebrate. When you're be rich. Yeah, it's a big day for me. Paying my oh, bills. Congratulations. With my own stuff. Isn't that good? Well done. And I, well done. Let's talk about control. <laughs> yeah, but the money thing is a big part of that, isn't it? The um, money thing. Yeah, being part control of, is like a. Yeah, but not absolutely. being in control of money is probably one of. Well, undoubtedly, one of the most stressful things in the in the world for most of us. I think we all have that. Anything goes remotely wrong with money and payments, and it's just that <gasps> it, there's nothing makes you feel as sick in terms of getting back on top of it. I think yeah. I had to pay my corporation tax last week. Ooh. Was it a big <sighs> one or a normal? It was one? actually, and I was thinking, well, what have I? The, I think the downside of not of be, of being remote is that I have basically no expenses, mm. so it's all profit. <laughs> <laughs> well, mine used to always take me by surprise, um, and but I think last year I got on top of it. I got out ahead of it, but I still think this year I need to just be careful that I have I'm sort of putting enough yeah. aside that I can pay that because there's no because I don't want to just go ah. Oh, God, I've got to take a contract to pay this corporation tax, and then you're back into the cycle again. Yeah, yeah. I know. I don't. I don't think it was like. Yeah, you know, I could certainly pay it, and it wasn't like a big shock. Mm. But I was surprised, considering I thought I hadn't done very many contracts mm. last year. So I thought, well, anyway. Uh, so, but I'm quite happy to do. I nearly responded. You know, somebody had been tweeting about that. Um, that uh, Captain Tom or whatever his name is. That man. That. 90 odd year old man who's walking around his garden and raising money for the NHS mm. so I was like it's just I mean it's a lovely story but he shouldn't have to be doing that <laughs> we shouldn't be funding our NHS of some man walk old very old man walking around his garden so uh I feel like uh I wanted to respond with that you know I've just paid my corporation yeah. tax have you kind of <laughs> we could we could sort of transform that into a sort of a reason that rich people want to avoid tax because they sort of want to remain in control of their money and choose what the money go is spent on yeah. which is something yeah. you're sort of used to being in control and then suddenly you're asked to relinquish your yeah. your success to the democratic processes and bureaucracies yeah, yeah, of government yeah. and they'll never make as good yeah. decisions as I can clearly make as my business success proves. Well I think that's the thing that about that sort of I'm really successful at business yes but at what price who's paid for that 
people paid that with zero zero hours contracts and not enough healthcare, yeah. and so you're not really that successful. You just exploited some people. Mm. So um, so so the 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 money and control are definitely close re- closely related. We we had this interesting control thing coming through this week because Croatia's on a slow unveiling of lockdown, <laughs> unraveling of lockdown. <laughs> right. So it's a three week phased. I, th- I think Croatia's actually handled this very well, very competently, never mind the numbers, but even the way they communicate with you. It's like tomorrow we will be discussing whether or not we're going to close this or tomorrow we're but next week we're planning to. So there's always been not just a decision, but a sort of warning that a decision is coming. And then so they've got this three week plan. And on the third week, nurseries will be open again. And so we were like, we had that moment of, uh, do we want, do we want our child to be in the first wave of people that are going back to nursery? Like, how do we do, how do we cope with this decision? And then, um, but we were sort of erring on the side of Croatia's being quite good. So we should probably let the system make the decision Mm. as we were talking about last week. But then, nursery sent a text message saying please let us know if you will be sending your child to nursery what Mm. do you mean i have a choice i don't want a choice (laughs) why are you asking me why aren't you just texting me and going great news nursery's going to be open next Mm. you know in two weeks time we really look forward to seeing you i don't want this Mm. i want you to tell me and there is that balance of you know needing and wanting to be in control of certain things but other things it it's, can be li- nicer to hand control to somebody else or seed control to somebody else. Yeah, definitely. I think I think, I think there's something nice about... I, I'm amazed that Sharon can sit there with me always having the remote control when we're watching telly. Like, I don't think I can handle... I couldn't handle... So- <laughs> <laughs> that's why the patriarchy in our house is I'm basically I basically have the remote if I come in the room am I a monster um, yes. <laughs> but it's like you get the to, not to bang on about personal training but like you know when whenever I, I sort of go in and I'm bleary eyed and it's 7 a.m and they're like what would you, do you would you like to do this I'm like I do not ask me to make any decisions. Just tell me <laughs> yeah, what to do. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, there's yeah. a comfort in that. There's a just not yeah, yeah. having to worry about whether you made the right choice. Definitely. Yes. So um, absolutely. So so what 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 is the difference between situations where like a relinquishing of control is sort of pleasant versus one where it's really not? It's where you start to feel like you're in, tr- like it's hurting you. I suppose. Or what do you think? I don't, I, I don't know. I was trying to think of the things. I think it depends on the complexity of the decision, the choices available, and whether or not you feel that you're, you have the not... Well, for me, it, it's whether or not I think that I know enough to make a choice and whether I am willing to take the risk of making a wrong choice. Mm. As a, In general, I'm quite a decisive person who's willing to take decisions and bear the responsibility of those decisions particularly in work but I feel very knowledgeable in my work environment in you know what I do I've been doing it for a long time and I feel like I can understand the risks where yeah. um whereas things like what to do in a pandemic I have no other than hiding to protect myself. You don't want to, you know, like it's. Well, it, yeah, it's it's sort of like being asked to be responsible for something that you don't understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. not a good it's feeling. Respons- yeah, responsibility. It's bearing the responsibility of a of a decision or something. I think. Hmm. So and I, and I guess to sort of think about all the un- you know the the unhappy people feel like that want to take back control that control that they feel they've lost is you know what is the control Uh, well I mean ostensibly it's oh we want some people in Westminster to have control over our lives rather than someone in Brussels to have control over our lives like I don't it seems like a weird still seems like an arbitrary place to draw the line of who you want to be in control um but I suppose the idea is that if we can't control our decisions around uh, whether or not chicken can be chlorinated like it puts us 
like in a weaker position because we have to do what someone else tells us and they have different interests to us. And we want to control our decisions because we we have different concerns than the people that we've given control to. Am I rambling? I don't know. I don't know. I think... I don't know if you're rambling. I think it's a, it's very personal control is. So if you're in mm. that sort of take back control gang, you're probably unhappy and angry or angry, therefore, unha- you know, that sort of combination mm. of those two things. It's like, what, uh, but when you're feeling bad, you don't necessarily make objective decisions. In fact, you rarely do. Mm. So everybody who's ever had any sort of eating disorder or any of those things often are seeded by a having something that you can control it's like yeah, small yeah. children will kick off at the dining table because they have no control of anything in their <laughs> lives yet they can shut their mouths and go i am not eating that thing that you are giving mm. me and i can exert my control over this situation yeah. um yeah i i, I i've so, some often thought that about like why are so many like often I don't know. I'm just thinking about hench people, like prisoners, like <laughs> like, like people that work out because that or like you know yeah 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 people that you know can't really earn money in the normal way. Society isn't really going to work. So I think the, a lot of control goes into the sort of like bodybuilding and well, working tight, out I mean, and kind what, of like, yeah. that's where you kind of put a lot of it, and then yeah. you sort of at least you feel like you can walk around and and. You, you've got that at least. Well, I, did, I mean, I, I think I without doubt. Badly articulated. Well, after my father died, I went to the gym every single day for about, well, it wasn't mm. straight away, but once I started like, I don't know, stop wailing, um, then I went to the gym every day. I, I'm sure it was like three to six months. Every mm. single day I would find a class right. or something or personal, anything just to, and yeah. then because, it get, because, I mean, obviously your own body is something that, as a rule, you can control. You can control what you eat. You control. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, there's various psychological nuances that make that all very difficult. But but there's yeah, a reason yeah. people throw themselves at this thing. Like I will run. I will do this. I will lift that. But um, and and I think that's possibly part of the reason why illness is very stressful. Oh, I heard, you know, there's a thing I heard oh, yeah. this morning about. Which I hadn't thought of at all is during lockdown, all the people who are in the middle of IVF can't continue with their IVF. So you've got this already devastating situation now, like compounded by the fact that you can't even attempt this treatment that might help you. Which is why I think people trying to get pregnant and experiencing all sorts of fertility issues get into this like, right, I'm not going to drink coffee and I'm not going to eat that and I'm not going to do that yeah. because. They haven't got a clue what's going on, so they need to <laughs> they need to try something. I'm thinking about like in the workplace now, like that feeling of you know, you want to give people ownership over something that they're doing and they'll do a better job. And if you start kind of interfering and micromanaging and sort of taking away their control, that's, I mean, certainly for me, when someone does that for me, I find that kind of really, really demotivating. Um, is there anything more to say? I don't, well, I don't know. I think there are some people, though, that do need to be... I So I operate from a position of everybody I work with, given the freedom and an output described, can... Deliver, want to at least deliver and then you've got some people but I think there are there are there are definitely some people who want to be told what to do yeah uh, and now that Teenagers. we've had the <laughs> mm, yeah, they well they don't want to but they also like <laughs> need that it thing, yeah you kind of like if you're not if you don't say it then they're not going to do it like it's no. yeah, sort of younger people <laughs> like, there is yeah it's like no when i say this i mean that you have to do this three times a week or you have to do um so there is a you know, bit of a balance it's it's having enough control that you feel you can do something good with it Perhaps like you can succeed. But when somebody says, you know, um, I don't know. Well, it's 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 on your personal. Um, 
I th- yeah, it's I the think right sorry. level of control is what we're shooting <laughs> yeah. for here, right? Yeah, yeah, the right yeah, level yeah. of responsibility yeah. slash control. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not like yeah. you're think, you're responsible for our sales going up or down for this year. Well, there's 2,000 other people. <laughs> you, you can't yeah, make yeah, that yeah. my job. <laughs> okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you know, in that work environment especially, but I think in life too, it's like don't tell me that's my responsibility because it bloody well isn't. <laughs> um, you know, so with this which I think goes back to this whole welfare and how people end up on welfare and how people on welfare are judged. Mm. The idea that we have full control over our lives is an absurdity. Mm. Um, yeah. So I think we just have to, you know, we're all just all trying to get through <laughs> as, <laughs> as happily and sensibly as we can. I keep picturing um, Maggie in the back of the car with the sort of steering wheel and then sort of that illusion of control. (laughs) Sometimes it's just a feeling and it doesn't have to be real. And I think, like, probably that's more what the Brexit voters have been given. They've been given, like, the fake steering wheel. Um, But they're still, like... (laughs) But at the same time, you know, if you gave them the real steering wheel, they would immediately crash the car. So it's like, well, you know, you can't... can't, (laughs) <laughs> We've got to kind of get do this at the right level. Um, well, it's like it's like the conversation that I have pretty much every morning with my daughter. Okay, have you brushed your teeth? No, I don't want to brush my teeth. Please brush your teeth. I don't want to. Brush your teeth. You're the worst mummy in the world. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> uh, yes, perhaps, but I really want you to uh, not have black. It's my responsibility to make sure that you don't have black, hurty teeth. Mm. <laughs> this is, hmm, why do I have to brush my teeth every day? <laughs> because you're not yet. <laughs> you're making decisions using all the wrong bits of information. Once I'm satisfied that you're actually, <laughs> I don't quite go into that much detail, but I do. It's like. She goes, why can't my room be a mess? Because it's my job to teach you how to look after things and yourself. But again, a, a very successful technique with my daughter. I don't want to get dressed. OK, you've got cho- you know, which which leggings do you want? These ones or these ones? Mm. Oh, I love those ones. Aha. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, uh, and I was going to say, like, <laughs> a, a lot of the time you're given you're given this sort of like fake control um, over. Yeah. Which of these medications would you like? Well, that's America. Or, like, there's a lot of um, people in power giving you false, a, false, a choice between two things that are basically the same. Meanwhile, the choice that you actually would, could be making um, that would actually help is not available. It's not on that, on that list. Yeah. I, I, think med, I think health and medicine is actually, for, for me personally, the trickiest mm. one. Because like you said about walking into the gym in the morning, it's like, don't ask me what exercises to do. <laughs> I've come to you for you yeah, to yeah. tell me how to be stronger. I'll do what yeah, you yeah. say. But then, and, and I, I'm very happy with that, like, ceding control to experts in, in many situations, yeah, yeah. frankly. It's, uh, we've definitely but sometimes with the doctors, when they sort of go... Um, where they where they fail to have demonstrated that they've understood what I'm saying. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like it's like yeah, yeah. I I understand. I want to cede you control, but you're assuming that my that when I say pain threshold that it's that I'm in a lot of pain that it's the same as everyone else's. It's like when I when I was having my daughter, I nearly had her like. It, nowhere near a, a, a birthing room yeah. medical assistance because they were like, oh, you're still talking. You're miles away from having yeah. your baby. I was like, do you know yes. me? Yes, well, we have talked about it. We have had this in the podcast. But and it's, yeah, like, like, it's like that sort of, you know, uh, hang on a minute. And, and I know like one of my cousins, she's got something wrong with her uh, esophagus. And for years they've been treating her for bulimia. And it's not, she's got a mechanical problem in her muscles and she keeps going, I can't eat. And they're all treating her brain instead Mm. of her, because she's a teenage girl. So therefore it must be an eating disorder. Do you know? So so I think you have the right and should challenge these figures, these, these experts and authority, but, but not in a way that 
is spitefully doesn't let them mm. help you. Yeah, you know, I, I see you what know, you it's mean. Like, it's like, like anyone with the authority, again, it com- comes back to having enough of an understanding of the situation to be able to make good decisions. And if they're clearly not demonstrating that they have enough understanding, then that's frustrating. You sort of want to... It's annoying when you don't want the control, but the other person isn't using their control properly. <laughs> that's properly? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really, it's like, no, 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 I wanted you. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. I think that's actually the crux yeah. of it. And I think that's what where I think that's where politics gets. So I think if you go back to the take back control, it's like, hang on a minute. My whole life, I've tugged my forelock at ministers and government and authority. And all you've done is fucked me over with austerity. Yeah, I'm angry and I'm going to have a pop at you. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's like, it's like, you know, sorry, you didn't, you thought, you thought that, uh, you know, you didn't, you didn't listen when I told you I couldn't swallow. Yeah. Well, afraid you're not, um, you've not, now I hate, you know, now I'm going to smash you up. Hmm. Nigel Farage listens to me when I say that I can't fart to swallow, but those bureaucrats in Brussels, oh, they don't I, can't even, I don't even get a chance to tell them. No, but, you they know, don't even so, speak English. Um, yeah, don't even speak English, like a proper, proper language. That's always disappointing as well when you cede control mm. and then it just isn't. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> and I think that's with employers as well. Like, I think employers have, in exchange for your loyalty and your hard work and your expertise, sort of have a duty to keep their business solvent <laughs> and mm. to make sure that they can look after you when things go wrong. You know, in this wo- in this current world, you know, some of these this businesses out there that I was listening to this f- fascinating interview podcast uh, in the New York Times on Sunday from a restaurateur. It was very melancholy and very touching and it was interesting and everything. But she she only had enough money in her bank to pay a week's wages to all the staff Mm. once business got bad. And of course, there are lots of circumstances that bring a business to that position. But it's like, really? (laughs) That's... That's how you're trading and you want me to give give me give you my life and you know tie mm. my whole how I'm going to feed my family and everything to you and it, I mean in this circumstance I don't blame I don't blame her at all but I it just it comes to an example of somebody in this case it wasn't frivolously brought to that but you know you work for people who take big gambles and yeah, the person yeah. who pays yeah, is definitely. is the staff who haven't got Months and months of savings. So, uh, yeah, yeah, we always, and I've definitely come a cropper of yeah. that uh, at least one big time. And uh, yeah, it's like that's just what's happening a lot now, yeah. isn't it? Like the poor people are paying for the mistakes of the rich people. And I do, like Bruce sent me that sovereign currency thing, and, and it's all about the kind of risk structure of banking and the economy and how banks can create money out of nowhere and how it's just like loads of stuff is set up in a way that it just incentivizes people to take risks on our yeah. on our labor yeah. Let me, let me talk about the thing that kind of got me thinking about the subject of control, which is this weird feeling I'm in at the moment. Like usually how much money I get is proportional to how many hours I work. Like when I'm contracting, I'm like, OK, I get a choice of which contract to take usually. And then it's like, OK, the more days I work, the more money I get. And that's just that's how it goes. And there's a there's a sort of it's frustrating in some ways because like I, I never take holidays when I'm contracting because it's like that's gonna cost me hundreds of pounds just to take a day off like um that's 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 kind of a tough decision to make but um the situation I'm in now which it's a wonderful situation I love it um but I'm having I'm sort of floating around I think there's a lack of sleep as well but like there's something happening where I'm like I I don't 
know why this is happening. And actually, like last year, it was leading up to this. I don't know why these numbers are going up. Why I don't? I haven't done anything. What's happening? Like, um, the coronavirus was slightly more obvious what had happened, but actually, like in the weeks before that, it kind of like gone up a level. And I was like, I, I didn't do anything. <laughs> this is weird. And then what you start doing is you start like desperately trying to create a narrative where you were in control of it out yeah. of the events, out of the decisions, the three decisions I did make. Suddenly that turns starts to get amplified into this narrative, yeah. even though like, you know, I did that document like my I quit contracting six months ago and here's how it's going. And you just look at that and you see like how the volume of different things I was doing throughout that time. And I'm very conscious that in order to sort of like make myself feel like I had some control over the situation I'm in now, I'm taking like this 0.1% of decision slash effort that I've made and that's turning into my narrative uh, as, as just a way to sort of understand what's going on and feel like maybe I could do it again um, mm. but it, it sort of feels pretty spurious but part of that is just something I learned from you is talking about how there's like a three month lag that if there's a few months lag between doing something or changing something and seeing the results it's, it's control requires a bit a feeling of control requires a bit of feedback. Yeah. So maybe I can sew that back into a point. <laughs> no, but I, yeah. Um, but I'm having to stop myself doing this a bit because it's like, well, yeah, okay. Yeah, you made a couple of good decisions, but you made loads of other decisions <laughs> throughout all those times. So it's like, don't start to sort of think that, oh, yeah, yeah, no, I did this. I deserve this. And which is the first thing you want to do. I deserve this. I did this. I, made, I was in control of this and I made it happen through my grit and my good hard work and my, you know, my I uh, wouldn't take no for an answer. And it's like, no, all I did was made myself some space to do the capitalism thing, which is have enough capital to not have to work for a bit and then see what happens. That's all I did. That's the only thing I did. And yes, I did loads of stuff as part of that. But the fact that only like 0.1% of my efforts has actually had an effect really puts me like should, sh you know, shine a negative light on me rather than making but, me feel great I about think, myself. I, mean, it's the, I think within that there is a thing about the worst thing that you can do often is nothing you know, if you want to mm. get something out there and we are talking product in life, there are definitely moments where it's best to just sit for a minute and have a think about it or just be. But mm. when you are trying to sell a product or promote something or get somebody to accept an idea or whatever, doing nothing is the most damaging Without a doubt, <laughs> like you just have to be, keep, sure. you know, keep on doing something. And I think it's very, and I think there's part of the nature of your, of your skills and what you do and how you are and who you are that demands analysis and explanation. When actually the explanation hmm. is I did loads of things. I was active. <laughs> I was actively talking about, I mean, in the whole COVID thing, Restaurants Brighton has had one duvet day where we all we had right. our morning meeting and it was just so like, oh, my God, everything's closed. Right. And we, we had the morning meeting. We just like, right. Mm. Shall we shall we call it? Let's all have a duvet day. Do mm. what you need to do. You know, tidy your desk, go in your shed, cry, whatever. And then we'll see you again <laughs> tomorrow morning. We'll have a and yeah. we did that. And but since then, we've not stopped doing things. Yeah. And that's reflected you know, in terms sort of traffic, in people getting in touch with us, and us having stuff to write about. Da, 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 da. So there's a difference between levels of needing to explain, like, I don't know, like, you know what I mean? Like, if you want a scientific explanation that's broken down and traceable, or then it's very, you know, that's, that's well, different. Well, everyone, everyone does. And that's, and that's, I just wanted to add that, like, it's, impossible to google for like marketing advice it's absolutely impossible because it's so much sort of spam and snake oil and nonsense and stuff that like is just sort of trying to pitch their product or like it's so hard to find any useful information on something like that because there isn't a tight feedback loop that and you can just like 
They yeah. just you could just write any story to explain your data. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then people will use that to sell you stuff and say, "Hey, we'll do this and we'll, you know, we I was, you know, these TikToks come up sometimes. It's like, "I made a million dollars and this is my technique that's proven and yeah, yeah. watch the next minute and then sign up for my book and pay 100 pounds a month for my course and this is proof that I'd as I yeah, that's just because that's not how it works. And that's why there's so much sort of like useless information out. And I think it's just because I think it's I'm going to explain it in terms of feedback loops. If there's not a tight connection between doing something and getting something out of it, it becomes just completely prone to like sludge of misinf- useless information and people exploiting it for, you know, dishonest or but I'm sure they believe it themselves as well. Well, but, yeah. um, I think it, it is hard to explain, and I think it's a, uh, and that is the problem, you know. That, but that's marketing and awareness. No one says just keep doing stuff. They well, say, Nick does. Oh, you've got to <laughs> break down your fur. You got. I mean, on these blog posts that you find <laughs> Nick when goes, you Google, Nick like goes, activity, activity, activity. We just hmm. need to keep putting things out there. Well, that's why, you know, that's why Nick is a much more useful person. But he's not at the top of the Google rankings when I search for how to sell my thing. <laughs> I mean, and obviously within that, it's like what is appropriate for me and what's the way to do it for my brand. But yeah, so going back to our control thing <laughs> and mm. the sort of the need for expertise sometimes within control and whether you concede it to somebody or not. If you try to keep it but can't explain either your success or your failure, it's not, a le- you know, what can you do with that? That's what you're talking about, isn't it? It's like, I want to be, I'm going to do this. I'm going to promote my own product. Uh, but now I can't explain why I've been successful. <laughs> <laughs> and to be honest with you, Michael, I'm not sure it matters. Well, but but then it's like, if it doesn't matter, then do, should I just like not do it? You know, well, I guess I should. There's So the answer is never don't do anything and just sit back well, and you've wait done for it that, to continue. You've, like you've got to keep, yeah. according to my rational brain, I'm sure we all want to just do the things that work and not waste so much time That's doing true. things that don't make any difference. And which has been my experience of most of my sort of side projects and solo projects is I do tons and tons and tons of work and it just seems like very little happens as a result. And then... And then I sort of do no effort on, I do some really easy, quick thing, and then that suddenly becomes my livelihood. Yeah. It's like, well, can I, <laughs> I don't know what to do. <laughs> like, I like, but also, oh, that's the other thing that happened. Um, I saw my first uh, brazen copycat version of my app oh, really? yesterday. Like someone's just like, it's just exactly the same thing. It's almost got the same name. It's got the same, like the icon is a different colour and the screenshots are of different musical instruments. Wow. And it's like, all right, mate, good one. Thanks for that. But I knew it was going to happen. It obviously means that I must be on to something. But that's why I prefer to, if I'm going to be successful with something, that it be something that's quite hard to for someone else to do a good job Copy. of. Yeah. But then that often comes with it probably being a bit overcomplicated uh, yeah, so yeah, yeah. you know it's a weird <laughs> it's a weird situation that is tricky that is wow but you know that shows you've succeeded yeah, exactly doesn't that. it sure and, and I've, I, I think there's enough to go round but it's just like you know come on mate like <laughs> you've just done, done exactly the same app as I've done um, but anyway mm. hey that's what's going to happen I was once, um, I'll just, let's just round it off. And I don't know if this is interesting or not, but like I was once, I made, um, I made this infinite music machine app a few years ago and like I used it to play a gig and this infinite music machine, basically it has, I've seeded it with a thousand different loops that are all kind of play and then made an algorithm that sort of makes different ones play and sort of it becomes musical. And I wanted to like use that as my sort of band and play along to that. And I sort of was in touch with this guy, this, uh, like it was quite a big PR agency that he was 
like artist management that had sort of discovered me through the timeout mention and I'd sort of sat and you know I'd sort of had a chat with him um and his sort of feedback on it was like well it didn't seem like you were in control that much in control I was like that was by design <laughs> I didn't I wanted to feel less in control because like I thought that was an interesting experiment but for that to be sort of like a criticism was quite a weird idea um people want to think that you're in control of what you're doing when you're performing um is that interesting i don't know when you're but when you've got too much control over it uh over the details of it which i like to be it just means i'm really concentrating really hard and can't really interact or see like pay attention to what how people are reacting or adjust and you know all my existence is about you know all of my kind of sort of passion projects are about f creating finding better ways to control the music um by yeah. making different devices and buying different bits of kit and plugging things in in different ways <laughs> it's just all about this but, like but, what yeah. is the optimum level of control that i can present something without that's i am controlling but without it being overwhelming i think that's sort of the the problem of it all i think with you've got to have the right amount of control is important because in full control, there's no room left for fun. Mm. And I think, you know, like when you, when you, so I think the idea of an experiment where you're deliberately seeding control, I mean, let's take out, let's take out of the equation, serious life, you know, things like mm. disease yeah, yeah. and Corona, mm. but you know, like things like if you have a very strict regime around anything, there's no room for serendipity. There's no room for um, you to try something new, to find a new taste, to listen to some new music, to uh, have, have a random yeah. chat with a stranger. Um, if everything's to... intentional, then, yeah, you sort of lose some magic. I definitely yeah. find that's always a balance I've been trying to find with music, but I think it definitely applies to life. It applies yeah. to a lot of things. Like You can't like... just... Yeah, see, you control see, everything. You can have a very boring one-dimensional existence. And yeah. You're never going to like be open to that serendipity. No, no. So I think I think uh, you know, be you know, feeling control, but enough. <laughs> I say, I think, give yeah. back control. I say, have more fun. Yes, <laughs> give so. back control. Have more fun. <laughs> can we agree give on away, that? Give away control. Give, give away. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for listening. If you like the podcast, go to grandpodcast.com. Uh, there, there's stuff on there. There's a subscribe button either there or in the app you're using. Where can people find you, Ivanka? People can find me at Ivanka on Twitter. Find me at Michael Forrest on Twitter. Uh, come and get my book. There's all links underneath. Everything we talk about is linked underneath. Um, if you like the music, I made all that. And some of it's on Spotify and other places if you want to listen to it. Like the whole thing. That's Crazy. possible. Uh, you can even buy it if you're some sort of weird pervert from the past. <laughs> <laughs> like if you wanted to do that. Can you imagine? What kind of idiot. music. If you want an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> paid for something. Uh, uh, oh, um, that's possible. Patreon. If you want to be, you know, help us. You know. Yeah, yeah. That's All cool. That. Show your support. Demonstrate your support Dude. in the only way that matters in this world, money. Oh. And with that, we'll, okay. <laughs> well, uh, see you next time. Bye! Bye! Bye, 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 yeah. bye. <laughs>